Let's go into a little more detail about the left panel here. Sources, stills, and treatments. So we're, we have two sources right now, and let's add a couple more. Let's say that there's going to be two graphics and two cameras. So we'll put graphics one and two into inputs one and two, and we'll put camera one and two into inputs three and four. Let's move camera down. And in the properties here, we want to change the input to three. So we've got one and three are currently plugged in. We're going to add graphics to the, you could either add a new source, which I went in over in the first video, but let's do it again. Let's add a new source. This one we're going to name graphics two. Our input type is going to be HDMI again. This input is going to be input two. We're going to create and configure. We're going to use 1080p 59. And just double check down here that it's correct. And click save. Oh, and we'll give it a thumbnail. And it added it down here. We're just going to drag it to this spot here just for the sake of management. We've got input one, input two, input three, all in order. The other way to add a source, if we wanted to add a second camera, you just right click and copy. Click on that and name it cam two. It's on input four. Configuration is correct, 1080p at 59. And that should do that. Okay, one, two, three, and four. So let's take a look at camera two and see what we can do here. We've got a preferred treatment. I'll go over that in a little bit. We've got linear key. This is part of the cut and fill feature of the switcher. Um, and then backup. Now, if you wanted to, you could use a source such as camera one as a backup. And if the camera two feed cut out, the backup source will automatically start running as if it were that source. So camera two dies. And then as far as the, the uh, guests of the show are concerned, you just switched to camera one. You can also use a still. Uh, for example, let's say you wanted the backup of everything to be a specific still image. You could use, you know, like a, like a hold logo or a hold slide. That way, if you lost the source, at least the still image, which is saved inside the spider, will show instead of just black. So it's just another um, fail safe, you could say. Both of them are very good uses, whether you use a source or a still as your backup. It just depends on what your needs are for the show. Stills are very simple. They are just uh, pictures. We can add an image by right-clicking an empty space and say, let's use media one. Now we have a still. Now if I drag it out here, that still just takes over and it's as good as a source. All done. Stills are very easy to use. Pretty, uh, pretty simple stuff. We'll go back to putting graphics one right there. We want to configure one of these sources. Let's say camera one, which is currently going to our projector. Break this down, break this down. And down here in keyframe, if it's collapsed, you can expand it. This is kind of some of the um, finer details of the sources that we're using. These details that we apply are going to also be used for treatments. So right here, we've got crop, top, left, bottom, and right, and a checkbox for reposition. So watch what happens with camera one when we make some changes. If we crop the top, it starts moving up everything that's in the image. Obviously, in the case of our projection, it's going to start adding some black. If you uncheck this box for reposition window and then crop, you can see how that changes things.
take the crop away. And this uh, ratio box is sort of an offset between uh, the aspect ratio of the image. In this case, it's 16 by 9, and if we, which is the equivalent of 1.777. You can drag either one of these and the other slider will respond accordingly. So we can go like this and it becomes a little more stretched out. We can go this way, it becomes stretched the other way. Now you see these white borders. This is the uh, limit of your pixel space. And so everything that's beyond it just disappears and does not get sent through to the projector. Let's just put our offset back at zero. To reset that, you can also click reset. And then transparency is very obvious. It's just a see-through percentage. Well, not quite a percentage, zero to 255. There's definitely some, uh, a little bug here. And I think by now they've probably fixed it. I know that my software is slightly out of date, but uh, for the most part, the changes are so minimal. I don't update every single time there's new software. We've got test patterns. If you wanted to, you could send some color bars to your sort to your output, and you would just see that on the projection or the TV or whatever it is you're sending it to. You can also change what it is if you wanted like a really fine grid. You could send a grid. You can change the pixel spacing of that grid to be more narrow or wider change the background color, do all kinds of things with these test patterns. Going over to treatments, we can go ahead and save this treatment. Let's go add new by right clicking the empty space. And let's just say we want 1080. All we want is the size and position. Uncheck everything else, hit okay. Now if we were to, let's say delete this. So our DSM is blank. Let's drag graphics two over there. You see it's not the right size. We can either click this to reshape it or we can send our treatment over and it'll do it for us. And it's just recalling a previously saved size and position. Now I have a bunch of treatments saved. I can add from file. Let's go to treatments. Got borders, cropping, default, drop shadows, sizing, borders. Oh look, black border, red border, and this say, recalls the transparency and the border setting. There's a red border, there's green border, blue border, pink border. You do it once and then it's really easy to recall that stuff. And then no border. If we go back to sources, let's go to graphics one, we got a preferred treatment of 1080. Now delete it. And when we put it in, it automatically applies that preferred treatment. If I had a preferred treatment here of a red border, and I wanted to put that in. There it is. Now, you'll notice it's not 1080p. We can only really apply one preferred treatment at a time, but you can either do it after the fact or if you wanted to, you could make a new treatment from this with both, with every setting saved, the size, the position, the border, and the transparency. Hit OK, delete graphics two, go to our source. Preferred treatment is this new one that we just made. There we go, it's a full screen 1080p red bordered graphics two. Exactly what we just did. Go back to none, 1080. We want 1080 on all of these because that's just what we're working with. That pretty much covers the sources, stills, and treatments.